So you need a network upgrade. That's probably why you click this video. Either that or you're just a huge fan of the channel and for that, thank you. Now personally, I already have what I would consider a advanced home user network setup, but a lot of people don't have that, which is why I'm actually at my buddy's place. He's in dire need of a network upgrade. He has literally the most basic network setup you can have. It's just the AT&T modem that they provided to him, which is one of those all-in-one kind of dealio things, which is fine. I mean, a lot of people run that and there's no shame. It does what it needs to do. But he's looking for a little bit more performance and a little bit more control over his network setup. So with the help of TP-Link, we're gonna make that happen. Okay, first off, let me clear the air. Yes, TP-Link did send all these Omada devices over, but no, this is not sponsored. No, they did not pay me, so any review I give is my own. They don't get any chance to see this video or edit it in any way, so the review I give of this stuff is 100% authentic. So let's go over what they sent over. Um, all these things are from their Omada line, which is designed to be that in between uh, power home user and business level network setups. So now I sent over four things. Let's put these aside. I'll go over them one by one. Okay, let's start with their router slash firewall. This is the uh, TP-Link Omada. All these are gonna be Omada ER605. And your router is essentially gonna be the brains of your entire home network. It's going to be what gives you the features that you're looking for in terms of uh, setting up VLANs, managing a VPN, you know, managing all the users on your network, uh, et cetera. So having a good router is extremely important. Uh, next we have the switch. Now this is a pretty solid switch that they sent over. This is the uh, 10 port, oh man, these model names are gonna kill me, TLSG2210MP. It's, it's their 10 port PoE uh, gigabit switch. So this is awesome because it has PoE. Now PoE is power over ethernet and what that allows you to do is, you know, if you're somebody who has cameras or other equipment that requires network connectivity, but also power, um, a lot of them can be configured using PoE, which means you just run one cable for power and for networking makes things so convenient when setting up access points or cameras or any other, you know, hardware places where you don't have to run power. So, so yes, while it is a 10 port switch, you do get eight RJ45 ports and two SFP ports. So SFP isn't very common in a home setup. So, okay. Uh, we also get a shiny new access point. This is the TP-Link Omada EAP660HD. Um, this is a Wi-Fi 6 router, so using the AX uh, Wi-Fi protocol. And the cool thing about this is that it is PoE, meaning we have a PoE switch, we can run power and network directly to this without having to run a dedicated power line. Now, one thing I did notice about the hardware that they sent me, specifically the router and the switch, is that the router does contain a 2.5 gigabit port, meaning that you get higher than gigabit uh, speeds but our switch is only gigabit ports. So if you were gonna go for the same exact setup, I would recommend picking a switch that has at least a couple 2.5 gigabit ports or just step it up and go to 10 gigabit. Uh, that way you get the full uh, bandwidth out of this access point, but everything's fine. It's gonna work, but I just thought that was kind of funny. Last but not least, we have the uh, controller. Now this is the OC200. Uh, I believe they have two different controllers. This is the smaller one or more budget one. Now what this is going to do is allow you to tie all your Omada devices together into one kind of ecosystem, one GUI to manage all your devices. And you technically don't need this. You can run the Omada software on your own hardware, whether that's you know, a tiny little computer that you have laying around, or if you have a home server, uh, you can run their software on that. You don't need this, but this just makes things a lot easier. And they sent it over, so 
we're gonna use it. Now let's talk about prices before we set things up. What I was told by the representative at TP-Link was that for their controllers, the OC200 is $89.99. You can step up to the OC300 for $159.99. For the access point, you are looking at $179.99. For the switch, this one is $149.99. You can step up to the XHP M2 model for $349.99. And for the router, you are looking at $60, which is pretty solid. Okay, so that's all the devices. Okay, so let's explain the plan of attack for this. Now, in a home network, it's normally comprised of four things. Your modem, which only purpose is to connect you to your ISP, and that's pretty much it. What is my purpose? Connect you to your ISP, and that's pretty much it. Oh my God. Yeah, welcome to the club, pal. The next piece is generally your router slash firewall. This is gonna be your main, you know, TP links, your Linksys's, your Netgears, you know, the standard routers you see when you go to Best Buy. Next is your switch. Now, what a switch does is essentially gives you access to way more ports than your general routers are going to provide. So a lot of routers come with normally four ports. Uh, you can get switches with up to 48 ports depending on how many wired devices you want in your home or business. And the last piece would be your access point. This is gonna be what ties all your wireless devices together. Now, if you are thinking, wait, I only have a router in my house and, and I can do all that. Yeah, most consumer routers are essentially a router, a switch, and an access point built into one. You don't have to separate these things, but in our case, we have a device for each thing, which generally gives you better performance and a more rich feature set. So what's the layout? How are we going to wire this? So the wiring is gonna be pretty straightforward. We have a modem. From that modem, we are going to run a single cable directly over to our router. From that router, we have uh, three ports we can use. One of those is going directly to the switch. And now that we have PoE on our switch, we can run a single cable directly from the switch to the access point, connecting it to the network and supplying it power. And last but not least, we have the hardware controller. Now this is PoE, which is awesome. So again, we can run a single cable from the switch directly to the controller, have it supplied power, have it supplied network activity, and just let it do its thing. So let's actually go take a look at it. Okay, so we are in the network room, AKA your son's closet, right? Yes. Yeah. So luckily with his house, he has a centralized location where all of the network is run into, making it easy to kind of, you know, connect everything to all the hardwired devices in the house. So here you can see the lone modem router switch access point combo that was provided by AT&T. And this is the old setup. This was running your entire home network, right? Yep. Yeah, so this will be an upgrade. Now we still need it. Obviously, the modem is what's going to be tying you to your ISP, so you still need this. But from here, we are running a single cable uh, directly from the modem over to our router. Let me pull that out. Eh. We have this cable running directly from our modem to our router, and the rest of these are running to um, other devices elsewhere in the house, but only one connection directly back to the modem. The other thing is that one of these is also running to our switch. So that would be, trust me, it's one of these blue ones. So one of those blue ones is running to our switch. Now that is the biggest piece of hardware we have in our setup. So you can see one of those is running to one of our eight RJ45 ports, and then the rest of these are outputs directly to devices within our network. Now, one of these is going directly to our controller, like I mentioned before, and you can see that tiny little guy hiding here. Here you go, just one cable directly to the switch powered over PoE, and it's doing its thing, monitoring all the other hardware. And the rest of these are either running to just ports in the bedroom um, that's already hardwired, and one of them is running to our access point that I will walk over there and show you. Let me get this thing set up back to how it was before, nice and neat. Anything's neat when you have covering to uh, hide the ugliness. So let's go check out the access point. Here is the access point. Our plan is to install it somewhere 
centralized in the home. Now this is a two story home and we do have this loft area. So pretty much this is going to be your best spot. Now, luckily we have already run the cable uh, from the closet all the way up through the attic. And now you can see it hanging out um, right above us. It's pretty easy to install this thing. Um, it comes with a bracket. We've already installed it, it's four screws. Uh, you can install it on a wall, on a ceiling. We're going on the ceiling. So I'll show you how easy it is to do. Now, don't call OSHA. So like I mentioned before, this is PoE. So when I plug this in, one cable, we should get lights, yay. And it's easy enough to install, just slide it in to the grooves. This only took like 10 minutes last time. It's super easy, super easy, trust me. Eh, go in, come on, get it up, just like that. Super easy. Oh, but in all seriousness, um, had I had a slightly bigger ladder, it probably would have been easier, but that's basically it. You plug in the cable, you mount the bracket, and you essentially just fit it in. And now you have an access point. So with everything connected, we now have to set it up. Luckily, uh, with the Yamada setup, they say it's super easy uh, with the controller, so let's check it out. Okay, back at our desk, and we essentially have everything configured now. Everything's connected. Uh, this is the user guide for the controller that we are looking at here, and you can see the typical network topology. We are following that essentially to a T. We have our modem, then if you remember, our modem's connected directly to our router, our router to our switch, then from our switch, we are going to our hardware controller, into our access point. So exactly how they have it listed here is what we have configured. So with the hardware controller, you have two options of setting it up. You have remote management and local management. And we're doing local management, so I'm not gonna touch remote management um, at all. We are going with the local management setup. Now with a lot of these Omada products, uh, you don't necessarily need the hardware controller to be able to configure them and get all the features out of them. So they're all gonna have their own management GUI. Um, so if you just wanna buy the Omada access point and throw it in your network setup as is, you can do that and have access to its own GUI. Uh, same with the router, same with the switch. They don't need the hardware controller, but the hardware controller just makes it easier. But in our case, setting up the hardware controller um, what you need is access to your router's configuration to essentially set up the hardware controller. So uh, we got on a wired connection and went to the default gateway of the router, which was 192.168.0.1. From there, we could check our DHCP tables to see what IP address was signed to our controller and go to that directly. So in our case, we just took it and set it to a static IP address so we wouldn't have to worry about it changing uh, down the line and we just knew what it was. In our case, that was 192.168.0.5. So the router was set up, configured. Uh, we got the IP address for the controller. So then just go to the IP address for the controller and click through all the setups. It will detect all of the TP-Link Omada devices on your network and give you a dashboard to see and control everything. And that's what we are looking at here. Now, I will give it to them. The Omada GUI for your network is extremely clean. It is leaps and bounds better than a lot of GUIs you see with typical network devices in the consumer field. I will say it looks eerily similar to Ubiquiti's uh, Unify setup. So I know they're directly competing with them, but this, this generally looks almost exactly the same. So positive or negative? You, you be the judge of that. But if we go in here, um, you can see simply if we go over to devices, you will see all of the devices we have configured and the IP address associated with them, the status, and here we have our router, this would be our switch, and this is our access point. All connected, all ready to go. And you can see obviously there's a long uptime here because we installed this to test it out a couple of weeks ago, uh, just so we had a bit of knowledge about this system prior to making a video. So this is what the controller gives you, easy access to all your devices, easy access to all the features on those devices. For example, say you wanna control users on your network. It's extremely easy to do uh, through the Omada setup. You can go over to clients and it will give you an entire list of all the clients that are on your network. It will show whether they're connected through Wi-Fi or through LAN. 
you can click on one of those. And if you want to look at the statistics to see you know, how much data they're using, what channel they're on, how much data they've used in the past, uh, you can do that. You can go over to configuration. You can set a rate limit if you find that you know, this device is using way too much bandwidth. You can set a limit on that. You can give them a fixed IP or a static IP directly from this field. And back in our list, if you want to block somebody, you can simply hover over them and go over to here and click block. And just like that, that user's blocked from the internet. This is, this is a good feature to have, you know, if you have kids that you want to, you know, take their devices offline at a certain time. Um, I believe you can set certain timings for blocking devices directly in the software. And I mean, it's just easy. It's easy, it's simple, it's clean to do a lot of these things. So one thing we did before was set up a guest network, which was, again, super easy. Um, to do that, you go over to settings at the bottom left. From here, you have a lot of access to your more kind of power user settings on your network. This is where all the cool features are gonna be, and I'm not gonna cover all that in this video. I will be making a follow-up video where we go much more in depth about all the features of the Omada line and how to configure them and walking through all the settings. But in this case, I just wanna show you the basics. So you go into here, um, you can go into wireless networks and you can see we have two set up. Now by default, you're going to have, you know, your basic one set up as the default configuration, but then you have the ability to go in and add more. Now, the amount you can add will be determined by which access point you purchase. I believe the one we have allows three. You would simply just click create a new wireless network down here. I'm not gonna do that, we already have two, but I will edit the one that we added to show you. Um, you give it a name, you specify what bands you want that running on, uh, 2.4 or five gigahertz or both. Make sure you have this guest network checkbox enabled. Uh, this was kind of confusing to me, at least initially, I went into the default network and I checked guest network because I assumed, because this is how it works on a lot of consumer routers, is that it would just simply kind of duplicate this network except make it a guest one. And that's not what happened. So I was kind of confused there. Then it turns out, duh, you just have to create a new one and then make that a guest network. So after that, you can just specify the security. Most of you are just gonna go with WPA personal. Um, specify a, a Wi-Fi security key. And there are a lot more advanced settings you can go in here with. If you have VLAN set up and you want this to be on another VLAN, um, you can do that. But with a guest network anyway, it's kind of already its own VLAN. So that seems a little unnecessary, but you know, if, if you're setting up another LAN Wi-Fi network that's not a guest network, but you want it on a separate VLAN, you can do all that here. I'll cover that all in a separate video. Another cool feature of this is that if you go down to the controller settings, here you will see um, some settings for a controller. You can specify if you want a static IP assigned to it or just to let it um, default to using DHCP and having your router assign an IP to it. Now, it's just up to you, whatever you wanna do, it doesn't matter. Um, the cool feature though, is that all these devices have a fallback IP address, which is extremely useful if you've ever set up a network where maybe you're resetting certain devices and maybe you reset your router, which was your DHCP server. And now all your static IPs are gone and you don't know what the IP of your device is anymore. In this case, if that ever happens, our fallback IP address for the controller will always be 192.168.0.253. Another cool thing about the Omada line is that there is a dedicated TP-Link Omada app. So you can do everything from the comfort of your phone if you know, you're know you that kind of person who likes doing most of your stuff from your phone. But yeah, that's it. Um, honestly, it was an easy setup. Everything connected just as expected. Um, we got directly into the router GUI. Uh, from there, we found our controller IP address. And once you go into the controller, it generally just auto detects everything for you, which is awesome. And the main benefit of the controller, meaning that if you wanna add Omada products down the line, you simply plug them in, go to your controller, and they will be detected and ready to go within seconds. So yeah, general first impressions, very easy setup. Um, there are a lot of features that are provided to you that aren't necessarily there in a lot of consumer uh, network equipment. 
to nitpick, um, there are some bugs in the GUI that we found just from you know, a couple of days of sifting through there and using it. One major one being that you can block a user from the Omada app on your phone, but you can't unblock them. So you have to log into a computer to unblock that user. And on the forums, they do say that they're working on this. So I expect this to be resolved relatively soon, but it's kind of a major issue. All right, well, everything's set up. Only one thing to do is test if it's even faster. Let's do that. Okay, so we are outside on the back patio and it's uh, pretty stormy. So we're gonna try to wrap this up quick, but um, we did run speed tests on the old network versus the new network, just to make sure that uh, with the new access point and all the new hardware, we were actually getting a performance increase, not only within the house, but outside in general, making sure that we have better range and all that good stuff. So with that said, running it on the old one, we were getting three uh, megabits down, which is terrible. And that's to be expected. That was with the AT&T all-in-one modem tucked away in a closet um, essentially in the back of the house. So with the new access point, with the new TP-Link uh, Omada access point in an actual good location, running Wi-Fi 6, uh, we were getting about 80 down. So that's 20 something times faster, which honestly, I, I wasn't surprised that it's faster, but I'm surprised that it was that much faster. So your mileage may vary. Um, whatever your old hardware is versus the new one where the location of your access point is, all that's going to be, oh God, all that's gonna be a factor in um, upgrading your network setup. And one thing to note is that TP-Link does have more access points. They do have ones that can go outdoors. So if you do have a large yard or a large property, uh, you can set up multiple access points with Omada and have just a huge amount of coverage. So that's it. That's all we have for the network upgrade. Um, thanks a whole lot to TP-Link for sending that over. I do believe their Omada line is pretty solid. Um, they do have a couple of software issues I think they can resolve, but overall, it was a pleasant experience. Um, I'd recommend that if you're looking for a network upgrade in the future and want kind of everything in one nice cohesive package. So I will be going over more in-depth um, settings and features of the Omada line. So make sure to check that out. I'll post a link up here when it's ready. If it's not there, then I haven't finished the video yet. So, but that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you like this type of content, be sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.